Here's an overview of a twin T filter and what it can do. This is a band stop filter constructed from a high pass and a low pass T shaped filter section connected in parallel. Here's a representation of that where the two low pass and high pass filters are not joined at the output just to show the individual low pass and high pass responses. So now over here on the top section for the low pass filter, any frequencies below the cutoff point will pass through that low pass branch and any frequencies above the cutoff point of the high pass filter will pass through on this other branch. Any frequencies that lie in between those two cutoffs will get attenuated. These component values I have right here target the 60 Hz area for both the low pass and the high pass sections. So if we join these outputs together between the cutoff minus 3 dB points of both sections of the filter, we begin attenuating and we really notch out 60 Hz right there. The bandwidth of this band reject, or in this case a notch filter, is the difference between the upper and lower cutoff minus 3 dB points. To find the center frequency of the filter, the geometric mean of the upper and lower cutoff frequencies will locate the frequency that is centered between them on a logarithmic scale. So in this case for a band pass filter, the bandwidth is the difference between the upper and lower cutoff frequencies and the center frequency between them on a logarithmic scale would be the square root of the upper cutoff times the lower cutoff frequency. The quality factor, or Q, for the filter is defined as the ratio of the center frequency to the bandwidth. As bandwidth is reduced, Q is increased and the selectivity increases as the filter targets a narrower range of frequencies to cut out. This is useful when you have a very narrow frequency range to cut out, like 50 or 60 Hz noise. And when components are chosen in a ratio like this, the notch frequency calculation simplifies down to 1 over 4 pi rc. But if the components are not selected to be in this pattern of ratios, the math can get really tricky really fast. But luckily there's filter calculators that make choosing components easier and figuring out the cutoff frequencies so we can keep it simple. This simulator here defaults to show a 60 Hz notch filter with these component values and we can change those if we want by double clicking the parts or we can drag around the sliders and observe what changes and how the response changes. Change say this resistor 50 ohms to 100 ohms. Now this turned into less of a tight notch and it's got a more gradual cutoff response. And over on this tool I've put in these component values here and the upper and lower cutoff frequencies are both targeting around 60 Hz. So if we look down at the frequency response plot, there's our notch at 60 Hz. And at the notch frequency, we can see here we have a phase difference. It suddenly shifts by 180 degrees. It goes from minus 90 degrees to minus 270 degrees. That's where we really get a signal cancellation at that frequency. To try to visualize that, here I have this original frequency, we will call it, starting at 0 and 0, the origin on the graph. So let's say that's our input signal. So now I've got two other sine waves representing those two high pass and low pass cutoff branches on the filter. And I'm phase shifting one by minus 90 degrees and the other by minus 270 degrees. So as we take that original sine wave in the two different circuit branches and they get shifted in this fashion, the result is these two signals recombine and sum together anywhere along these two waves, they sum together as zero. So that's why right here, when we have that kind of phase shift going on, our signal is taken out practically at minus 40 dB. So now if I want to change those component values and observe what happens. I set up some values here. Let's say we want to hold the rest of these values constant and we just want to change R3. Right now it's 10k. Let's say it's a 10k pot and we want to observe as we vary that down toward let's say 100 ohms minimum. Our center frequency is somewhere 4 to 500 hertz. 
And if we do the quick calculation on the geometric mean, the square root of each of these cutoff frequencies multiplied together gives us 556 hertz as the center frequency. So now we can take this and shift the center frequency up by lowering the resistance on that pot. Here's the filter in LT Spice. I've got this resistor here set up where I can change the value of R from 100 ohms to 10 kilo ohms in 1K steps. And here I can see the different response plots for the different values of resistance. So here as the resistance changes, lower values bring the center frequency up and we're going from several hundred hertz up to a couple of kilohertz at different amounts of attenuation. And one interesting thing that we can do with this sort of situation, if we take that filter and throw it in the feedback loop of an op amp, we can invert the response. So in the original circuit on the top, we start at zero dB, not attenuating or amplifying, and then we attenuate as a band reject, but in the bottom, we have the almost exact same behavior inverted. So we start out at zero attenuation or amplification, but then we amplify the signal for a certain pass band, then we go back to regular unaffected signal levels. So that gives us some interesting possibilities, including various tone control circuits. We can boost or cut certain audio frequencies. So we'll be taking a look at this sort of circuit structure more in the future.